Wargaming is a wild hobby. It's not for everybody, but it's also not impossible to get or coerce your friends into it either. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. It's not a fun topic, but we all know what the most difficult part of the wargaming hobby is. It's not putting together the minis, it's not painting, it's not reading and memorizing pages and pages of complicated rules, it's getting people to play the game with you. The best way is to get in with a friend. Most games have a starter set, a big expensive box that comes with two armies and everything you need to play. But that doesn't always happen. More likely, you'll have to become a game advocate. In a perfect world, every game system would have a large player base ready and waiting for you to jump in. But as rare, although not impossible, you can ask around at your friendly local game store or look for Facebook groups in your area. One time I was shopping at a hardware store and it turned out that the owner and employees played 40K in the basement of the shop every Friday night. More likely, you'll have to do everything yourself. Buy all the stuff, learn everything about the game, paint all the stuff, learn the rules inside and out, be able to answer questions, and this can actually be a fun hobby in itself. Basically, you can become a wargaming dungeon master. Now the game I want to play is called Dead Zone. It's a skirmish war game, a little bit 40k with points based army list building with a leader followed by troops, specialists and support. And it's a little bit Necromunda played on a tight claustrophobic board with lots of verticality. It's also built on a D8 system, which is great, which means that those two extra results on the die adds a lot more fine tuning and they don't have to resort to special rules and rerolls so much to add uniqueness. I've also already built and primed all the trains, so I'm going to start here. I gathered my supplies. Terrain painting is a lot of fun. Instead of many, many small steps, I can get away with just a few big ones. I mixed up a gray paint and began stippling this all over the terrain pieces. This will give them a texture. I used the biggest dry brush I owned, and you know what? I wish I had a bigger one. Then I mixed up a lighter shade of gray, and this time I let more paint be on my bristles, and I dragged the brush across the model to highlight edges and make long scratches. I want this terrain to look so good that it tricks people into having a good time while playing the game with me. Finally, I sponged some white paint all over to create some chips. Step one of the train is done. I have created an undercoat. This is gonna let me paint them up really, really quickly. Basically, I've painted everything in black and white. I've added all of the chips and scratches and weathering I wanted using huge dry brushes and sponges, so it was really, really fast. And now to get them the color I want them to be, all I have to do is tint them with my airbrush. An important thing to remember about an undercoat is that the tints are only gonna darken, and that's why I highlighted everything all the way up to white so that when I tint them, they're at the exact color I want them to be. I prepared to get colorful. The airbrush is a great tool for getting things done fast, and to tint the pieces the colors I want, I'll need some transparent paints. And that means inks, washes, and speed paint. I am always the one getting war games started. X-Wing, Warhammer 40K, Star Wars Legion, Age of Sigmar, Kill Team 1 and 2, Malifaux, so I know a thing or two about a thing or two. And when trying to find people to play with, it's important to choose your mark carefully. If someone plays video games, they're a good candidate. Do they play war game like video games? If they play Civilization, XCOM, or Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battles, they're a prime lead on a new tabletop buddy. They might already have a foot in the door to tabletop wargaming. If they play games like Mechanicus, Vermintide, or Total War Warhammer, then they're already halfway there. Also, anime fans are a good get. Anime fans love to get lost in fictional universes. I have a little bit of color on the terrain. I don't know if I would call it finished, but I'm ready to move on. This box came with 24 figures, so I gotta get a little paint on them too. So let's move to the painting desk. I gave all these models a Zenithal Prime. I'm gonna attack these models the exact same way I did the terrain. With the Zenithal acting as my undercoat, all I had to do was put on some Army Painter Speed paints on top. It's nothing special, but it's a great simple first step to get my minis tabletop ready. And I want them ready, because it's better to show how cool tabletop gaming is with painted minis. Nick and I are planning on playing this game tomorrow, but oh no, it's not all done! Well, I think that's fine. I actually think it's a good idea to play with unpainted or unfinished minis. I could have taken a couple of weeks, or more likely a month, to get everything perfectly painted and wrapped up in a little bow, but I actually think that might have been a recipe for disaster. You see, there's two schools of thought here. There are those who say that if you allow yourself to play with unpainted minis, you'll open the floodgates, and now you'll never have any incentive to finish anything because you've proven you're willing to play with unpainted minis, and so why bother ever finishing anything? But on the other hand, these things are games to have fun. And after you have a game, you're gonna have a solid endorphin hit that'll carry you through the next painting session. You're gonna be excited to get things painted up so that your next game is even more fun. I fall into the second camp. Do whatever you want. If you hate painting but you love the games, you never actually have to paint your stuff. 
I think you maybe should give it a try. You might find you actually like it, but you don't have to. And taking a break from building and painting will give me an important opportunity to familiarize myself with the rules. And what better way than with some B-roll? There's always a little bit of a frustration learning a new war game. It's no fun to be bad at something, and when you just start out, you're gonna be a little bad at it. When you're trying out a game, especially for the very first time, it's always frustrating to have to constantly check with the rule book. So it's good to know as much as you possibly can going in, so that the game flows better and you have more fun doing it. I've read these, and I feel like I am ready for my first game. While playing the game, do everything you can to make sure that your opponent is having a good time. Let your opponent pick what faction is more interesting to them, and it's a good idea to play a little example game first. Just go through the phases and actions of the game, and then you can move on to a full game. If a rule is confusing or your friend is asking the same question over and over, don't just reread the rule or read it slower, but try and compare it to something else. An action from a video game, maybe, to put it into context. And when it's your turn, explain exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. And another good way to rope your friends into playing war games with you is to let them win. It's a good way to keep them engaged. I mean, I had 18 points and you had five. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I let I killed, you win. I killed way more guys. I, I let you win. But it was fun, right? Yeah, great. I loved it. Yeah, awesome. So, same time Friday? Sure, sounds good. Great. Get out. Uh, okay. I, I let him win. I am jazzed after the game, and I am ready to now take these minis to the next level. The almost finished speed paint job I did before our first game looks decent, but now I want to take my minis a step further. I did some free handing on all my GSPS soldiers, reasonably the markings would mean something to the soldiers, and the stripes on the weapons and helmets will show off how well organized the marines are compared to the rabble that is the vermin. All these rat folks have containers of glowing green goo, so I airbrushed a neon green on all of the tubes. And I wanted a little gore on my Rat King's knives, so I brushed some Blood for the Blood God onto the tip of my airbrush and let the air blow it off to get some good splatter. And now onto the bases. I put just a little texture paste on the base to represent the texture of concrete. Then I mixed up some brown and black ink and slobbered this all over the bases. I want to recreate the look of the board the game came with, as all my matches will be played on the same board. My goal with these guys was to make them super beginner friendly. If I'm gonna be teaching this game to people, I want the models to represent exactly what they are at a glance. I painted all the flamethrowers bright orange so it's easier to spot them, and I did the same for the grenade launchers, making them blue to stand out from the green of the normal laser guns. Stuff like this is very helpful for normal looking models like these soldiers. The rat folk are a little easier to make out as they're physically much bigger and there are larger differences between the different units. On the terrain, just like the minis, they had some color, but I can do more. So much more. I used masking tape and stencils to sponge on some stripes and letters to really punch up what was already on there. I used sponges instead of the airbrush because I don't want these things to look clean. The airbrush would have given them a crisp symbol, but sponging will make them look chipped, faded, and weathered, which is perfect for the battlefields of Dead Zone. Now that I have played the game and I like the game, it's a joy to continue working on the minis. I want it all to look nice. The nicer it is, the more enticing it is to prospective noobs. It's fun playing games, that's the real draw, but you can relive a little of that fun while you're painting and getting ready for the next game. Reminiscing about all the amazing things the minis pulled off in that last game and thinking about what stories will unfold in the next. It's not a bad idea to text your burgeoning battle buddy with some work in progress pictures of the minis, keep the game alive and keep them excited. And if you and your friend had any big rules questions that you were not able to figure out on the day, give the rulebook another read and when you find the answer, let them know. Hey, you remember when you couldn't figure out if the models could shoot into cubes with friendlies? They can, but there's a penalty. I think that's what makes war games better than video games. Sure, it's a lot more work, but I find it a lot more fulfilling. You get the satisfaction of learning the rules instead of just letting the computer do all the thinking. And you get a bunch of amazing figures. And of course, the best part of getting into any war game is looking at all the beautiful minis you can buy. I got everything looking spicy. I am really liking using undercoats to get good, interesting value and texture on my minis. It works best with bright colors. On both the terrain and the minis, I started out simple and I was able to layer on more and more paint to make them more interesting. I think they're pretty good right now and I could keep working on them to make them even better, but for now, they're ready for a rematch. If your friend is back for a second game, you got him. If they're not already a gamer or used to board games and tabletops, maybe you can try to glob on wargaming to something else. Go out to eat before or after, make it a tradition that before your weekly froth sessions you get a game in or two, or maybe you could plan to watch a movie afterwards. Just work it into the schedule, and if you're lucky, they'll be hooked. The second game of Dead Zone was a lot closer. I mean, it was 6 to 18 versus 5 to 18. Yeah, closer. 
But you've got a few games of Dead Zone under your belt, so what do you think of it? I like it a lot. I love that we don't have to deal with measuring tapes, you just move the cubes. That is nice. Yeah. Between the humans and the rats, which faction do you prefer? I like the rats a lot because there's a lot of different options in this box, but I think I like the marauders, the orc-like units. Ooh, interesting. Well, I'm gonna keep on working on the vermin and the humans, the GSPS as my main faction, and the rats as the loners. And you know, to be a good little advocate of Dead Zone, I think I'm gonna need some more factions. You know, maybe, maybe I'll pick up a box of Enforcers, the Space Marines of the Mantic Universe. That could be pretty cool. And you know, maybe, you know, maybe I get some Forge Fathers, the Dwarves. That could be really cool, you know. And all right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.